Good morning. Welcome to this, another Word from the Word, brought to you by your friends here at the Madariville Assembly of God. I am so grateful for not only our mothers today, this is Mother's Day, but all of the godly women who have such a great impact upon our lives. And we want to honor all of you that are in attendance today at the, at the church. Uh, we hope that you can all make it. There'll be a special gift for all of our ladies and we just want to give you a small token of our appreciation for what you mean to us. We're going to be reading today from the book of Exodus chapter 20, the book of Deuteronomy chapter 5, and also from the book of Ephesians chapter 6. So I hope you have your Bibles with you and can follow along in your Bibles. Very important that you check out what the preacher is saying by the Word of God. So Exodus 20, Deuteronomy 5, and Ephesians 6. First, we'll read from Exodus 20. This is the listing of the Ten Commandments. I am so proud of some of our young people, some of our, our very young children that have memorized over the past couple of weeks all of the Ten Commandments in order. I'm so proud of one young man, uh, just like uh, last week, I believe it was, was able to recite all of them for me. I hope he'll do it uh, for us here in the sanctuary sometime. A lot of older Christians can't do that. But one of those commandments is the one that we find in Exodus 20 and 12 where it says, Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Honor your mother and your father. Then Deuteronomy 5, 16. Uh, the Ten Commandments are restated there. The word Deuteronomy means second law and it's probably because of that repetition adds a little bit more of a blessing involved with honoring your mother and father. God's word says, Honor thy father and thy mother as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee, that thy days may be prolonged, and that it may go well with thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Now, honor thy mother and thy father is the fifth of the Ten Commandments. Such a very important commandment. Some of the Jewish rabbis believe that it was the most important of all of the Ten Commandments. Uh, you know, our mothers and fathers are to teach us to honor God, and, and we learn how to honor God by honoring them. It's been rightly said, if we don't honor our mothers and fathers, uh, those that are very close to us, how can we ever learn to honor God? So we, we notice that all of the, the commandments have to do with, with honor. The, the first have to do with honoring and loving God. We have no other gods before him. We honor him. We respect him. We love him. We honor his name. We honor the Sabbath day. But the remaining commandments, beginning with this one, honor your mother and father, have to do with honoring other people. We honor mother and father, the first relationship that we have, that one that carried us in her womb. We, we honor her. Thou shalt not kill. We honor and respect human life. We, we don't kill. We don't destroy life. God's the giver of life, and we have no right to take that life. Thou shalt not commit adultery. We honor the sanctity of marriage. We, we honor the marriage covenant. Thou shalt not bear false witness. We honor the truth. We're men and women of the truth. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not covet. We honor the property that belongs to other people. Now back to our parents. Our parents are first and foremost teachers for us. As a parent, it's our primary job to educate our children. Don't think that it's the school's responsibility or even the church's responsibility. That is meant to only be a supplement to what you do as a godly Christian parent. You are meant to portray to your children what it is to live for the Lord Jesus Christ. As godly parents, it's your job to direct their hearts uh, toward God. And it's from the love of godly parents that we get our first concept of what the love of God is. Our Heavenly Father must be like. Now, it's from honoring mother and father that we first begin to learn what it is to honor and respect God. Leviticus 19.3 takes us to a different level with this. You shall fear, that means respect or honor. Every man is mother and father and keep my Sabbaths. I am the Lord your God. Now, there are many scriptures about fearing God, about being God-fearing people. Of course, we realize that word has to do with respect and honor, not with the kind of fear that we think of oftentimes. We honor and respect our parents. We honor and fear and respect God. Then on to the New Testament. When 
The Apostle Paul quoted the fifth commandment in Ephesians 6. He was writing to a large multi-generational church, the church in Ephesus. He gave specific instructions to the old, to the young, uh, to the children, to the parents. And we'll talk about some of those things just a little bit later. We're going to be a little more specific with that one. But what do the scriptures tell us about honoring our mothers, especially our mothers today in light of Mother's Day? Well, it means we value them. The Bible, Old Testament scriptures, of course, were first written in Hebrew. In the Hebrew language, that word honor is kavod. It means uh, something that is heavy or weighty. And the idea is something is valuable. Think of an old-fashioned balance scale. Something is important because it has a lot of weight on the scale. Now, you might ask, how is that transferred into honoring someone? We place a heavy weight of importance on those things that we honor. Uh, those things we dishonor, we take them lightly. Uh, you know, we, we take God's name in vain. It's a, it's a great sin. That means we take his name lightly. We don't place a heavy enough weight of importance on his name, and we, we use it like a swear word or like filler. We dishonor our parents when we take lightly who they are in our lives, or we take God lightly. We, we don't want to do that. So why should a child obey his or her parents? They do so in order to honor them. They, they place the word of their parents as something very important, something very weighty. Now, if we dishonor them, or if we disobey them as children, we're dishonoring them, we're dishonoring God, we're taking their words as of little importance. By the same token, if we're disobedient to God, we're dishonoring Him. So that kind of honor and respect has to do with the weightiness, the importance that we place upon their words. You know, uh, Colossians chapter 3 and verse 20 gives us these words, Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Now, when we come of age and we get married especially, that takes on a, a little different light. Uh, the rules perhaps change just a little bit. Uh, our new home becomes a new entity. You know, the, the marriage creates a new uh, entity to become one. A man leaves his father and mother, uh, Genesis 2.24. The relationship changes, but the command to honor does not change or diminish. Uh, you know, we have a our first responsibility to our mates, but we still greatly value, we place a weight of importance upon our elders, upon our parents. And I believe that gets uh, even more noticeable the older we get. Somebody said the older we get, the, the more wisdom we realize that our parents had. Uh, somebody said the older I become, the smarter my mother became. So true. So we ask ourselves today, does, do our actions portray a, a weight of importance or unimportance to our elders, especially to our mothers. Uh, do my actions toward the other godly women in my life, the, the people that God has set up in my life, does it show a weight of importance or unimportance? Now, secondly, the Bible gives us ways to honor our mothers, to value them. Probably as many different ways to honor our mothers as there are people and there are mothers. First, it's important, I believe, that we show an attitude of gratitude uh, toward the Lord and to those that he's given us, our mothers. Uh, Shakespeare, though probably not a Christian, at least a born-again Christian, wrote how sharper than a serpent's tooth is to have a thankless child, an ungrateful child. That's so very true. Our parents made sacrifices for us, sacrifices that, that we knew about, some of them, and some of them we will never know about, some of them we never know about until we're parents ourselves, but great sacrifices have been made by our parents. So I encourage you, if your mother is alive today, thank her for the great sacrifices that she made for you. I thank her for the sacrifice of even bringing you into this world. If your mother is not alive today, if your mother is in heaven, if your mother has already gone to her reward, give thanks to God for the ministry that she had in your life. The Bible tells us that the opposite of that, gratitude, is going to be one of the signs of the last days. 2 Timothy 3, 2. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. So we have scripture for honoring our earthly mothers that way, but we also have scripture that speaks of some of our other quote-unquote elders in the Lord, the spiritual mothers 
and grandmothers in the church. Here's what the Apostle Paul uh, told a young pastor, Timothy, about some of those different groups in the church. 1 Timothy 5.1, Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father, and the younger men as brethren, the elder women as mothers, the younger as sisters with all purity. Now, sometimes we use that word elder to represent a specific ministry within the local church, a ministry that's synonymous with that of bishop or pastor. But here it would indicate that the word elder is used for just one of the older brothers men in the church. And we are to respect them as we would our earthly fathers. We're to value their words, we're to value their lives, to treat them with godly respect. Those that are younger, those that are more our age, those we might call our peers, we treat them as brothers. We're a part of the family of God. Uh, you know, especially those of the opposite gender in our relationships with the opposite sex, we treat them as we would brothers or sisters with honor and respect. Well, what about the older women? We treat them as mothers, as grandmothers. I'm thankful to have had uh, a mother that I loved. I knew one of my grandmothers, I loved her very much. Both of them are in heaven, had a great impact upon my life. But I'm also glad for some other godly older women over the years that have had a great impact upon my life. I am so thankful for them. Uh, not just a blood relationship, uh, but people that have had an impact upon me. Thank God for them. We also honor them for their wisdom and we're willing to listen to their counsel. That doesn't mean they're always right, but we honor and respect them enough to listen. You know, sometimes they just want to be listened to. Proverbs 8 or 1 8, my son, hear the instruction of your father and forsake not the law of your mother. Proverbs 15 20, a wise son makes a glad father, but a foolish man despises his mother. You know, how much joy children can bring their parents and how much grief. And of course, we hear their words and we honor them so long as those words are according to the Word of God. Now, According to the book of Proverbs, a big part of honoring God is listening to godly counsel. And we want to honor godly counsel wherever we hear it. Now, when Paul wrote to young Pastor Timothy another time, he made a clear reference to the wisdom and the spiritual guidance that Timothy had received from some of the maternal influences in his life. He had an ungodly father, a father that was a, an unsaved man. But he had a godly mother and grandmother. We read about them in 2 Timothy 1.5. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. So he said, Timothy, I see some spiritual traits in you that I have seen before. I realize they came from the godly influence of your mom and your grandma. So we're grateful for all of those that have given us that godly influence. Someone said that you can uh, really judge a society by how they treat their elders. And a society that fails to honor and respect, place importance upon the older generation is a society that's on its way down. So thank God for them. Thank God for the name that they gave us. You know, we want to honor the family name that we've been given. You know, Proverbs says that, a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. We honor them by being willing to look after them when they're old, and that looks different for everyone. That's not to say that the best place might not be a care center where they can receive medical care as they need it. Uh, it might mean them living in your home. It might mean you seeing to it that they can have just as much independence as they can all the days of their lives. But we want to make it clear, the Bible says in Proverbs 23, 22, Hearken unto thy father that beget thee, and despise not thy mother when she is old. And you know, there is a principle of sowing and reaping in the word of God. And uh, you know, we, we want our children to see a godly example of how we treat our own parents. So once again, Paul speaking to Timothy about the various groups in the church, he spoke in 1 Timothy chapter 5 about the widows. You know, widows in those days had no other means of support oftentimes but the care of their families, the care of, of the church in some cases. They didn't have Social Security or pensions or any kind of relief that was offered to them. So in 1 Timothy 5, 3, Paul says of these widows, honor widows that are widows indeed. And, and you read the context there and you'll find what that means. But if any widow have children or nephews, 
Some translate grandchildren, I believe. Let them first learn to show piety at home and to requite their parents for that is good and acceptable before God. So the church was to be willing to look after them, but if they had children or other relatives, that was to be their first responsibility was to look after their families. Now, how important is that? Well, you read on down in verse 8, he says, If any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. So a person who refuses to see that his elderly family members are taken care of, for whatever that looks like in each individual case, that person is someone that's denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Very important truth. So what's the best way you can take care of mom? That will vary. No one but the Lord and, and you and, and your parent knows exactly what that's going to look like. But I believe you can be led by the Holy Spirit and God will lead you and direct you. As Christians, we should set the gold standard for what it looks like to look after our older family members. Uh, you know, we, we show importance to them and in doing so, we're also honoring God. Honoring God by showing them importance. And then there are reasons to honor mom. First, we honor her because it's just the right thing to do. Why do you do something? Well, it's, it's right. We want to do what's right. Ephesians 6, 1, children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. We don't need any other reason. Sometimes my mother, when I would ask her why on something, she said, because I said so. Well, God says so. That makes it right, and we should do it. Colossians 3, 20, children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. If you want to please God, you're going to honor your parents. And if you don't want to please God, then don't honor your parents. You know, back to the Jewish rabbis, they said, how can you honor God if you don't honor God? mom and dad so we honor not only the good and, and godly but even those that aren't so deserving uh, they're not so perfect uh, we still show you know some respect for them just because of their position as our parents even if they haven't always done things that are right we honor them also because there is a blessing promised to us in the Word of God Ephesians 6 1 children obey your parents in the Lord for this is right Honor thy father and mother, listen to this, which is the first commandment with promise. Now, what's the promise? That it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. So we honor them that it may be well with us, and that we may have a long life. Now, that is not to say that if you have a shortened life, that it's always because you didn't honor your mother and father. But I will tell you that your quality of life is going to be far, far greater if you honor those and respect those whom God has placed in your life. Uh, nothing any more uh, bitter and miserable, I don't believe, than someone that doesn't have that proper respect for their family members. A bitter, bitter, unhappy person. So what's your homework today? Well, let me give you just a little bit of homework from this lesson. It's more important than sending flowers or a card, although that may be fitting. Some of your moms and grandmas and some of the adopted moms in your lives may really like that. But let's pray that God will allow you to do something tangible. Oh, pray for them. That's, that's true. But more than, than just praying for them, to do something tangible to, to honor and bless the godly women in your life. Give mom a call if you can, if she's still living. Thank her for her life and testimony. If she's not alive today, lift up your voice today and say, Thank you, God, for the ministry of that woman that I was allowed to call mom for however many years that it was. Uh... I've often thought that it's our mothers that we should honor on our birthdays. We didn't do anything but show up. Mom was the one that made the effort. Mom was the one that went through labor and all of the pain and those nine months of pregnancy for us. Thank God for moms. So we want to honor her not just today, but every day. If you have a mom, honor her. If you don't have a mom, find someone else to honor and show respect to today. You know, there are people even in some of our nursing homes that don't get very many visitors that need someone just to to be there and honor them and love them and respect them. Pray for them. Cook them a meal. Uh, take them for a ride. Uh, do something that they've wanted you to do by way of a chore that you, you, know, you know they've been wanting you to do for a long time. But be led by the Holy Spirit, and I believe he'll give you some tangible ways to honor your mother. And like I said, if you don't have a godly mother, then by all means, find some other godly woman that you can honor and respect today. So to all of our moms today, we pray God bless you. Our goal today is to make you feel honored and respected 
God loves you and we love you today. We want to give honor where it's due. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for our mothers, those who carried us in their wombs, but also those who carried us in their hearts. We thank you for their hard work, their labor of love, the sacrifices that they made for us. Lord God, sometimes we cause them to have tears in their eyes, and Lord, we, we regret that. We pray that, Lord God, that we will do everything we can do, Lord, to honor them, to respect them. We ask that you would bless them today, Lord, that you would allow us, Lord, to have some tangible way that we might show honor to them. And Father, we ask these things in Jesus' name, the name that is above every name. Amen. Praise God. Well, go out and do your homework today. Find some godly woman to honor today. Give thanks for your mothers, your grandmothers. May God bless you today. And don't forget, church, Jesus is coming. Maranatha. Maranatha.